CSGO is the biggest FPS game of all time. Ever since the release of the game, it skyrocketed in popularity and now has been crowned as the biggest FPS game of all time. And it seemed like it could never be rivaled. That was until 2020, when a new game was creeping up in popularity. The game soon after its release began to shatter records and it looked like it was going to boot CSGO off the throne that it sat on for nearly a decade. But today, this game sits on the shelf after it took a nosedive in popularity after its very short-lived success. And of course, I am speaking about... Valorant. But why? What happened to cause Valorant's fall from grace? Well, let's talk about it. But before we get into why Valorant is dying, we first have to talk about how did we even get here? And what the hell is Valorant anyway? Well, to answer the second part of that question, Valorant is a 5v5 tactical FPS game, but with a twist. The game is more of a mashup of CSGO gameplay and Apex Legends, well, legend system. The game was originally announced in October of 2019 in this teaser video by Riot. And the game looked pretty good. And it was said that it would feature precise gunplay. Yeah, maybe not the second one. And then in the cursed year that was 2020, players would get their first chance to finally try the game out with a closed beta in April. The way that players got a shot to try out the game was through watching Twitch streams of the game that had drops enabled. So basically, you would watch a stream for a certain amount of time, and if you got lucky, then you'd be dropped with a key to play the game. This time was what most of the player base who was around at that time would refer to as the golden era of Valorant. During this period, the game got a massive amount of traction, and popularity of these live streams were booming. The viewership of these live streams around this time was peaking at around 1.4 million views in total. However, the first problem started to arise at this time as well. This was thanks to an online media outlet called Inven Global, but we'll be coming back to this. Then, on the 2nd of June of the same year, the game finally went live for everyone to play. And just two months after its release, the game hit a whopping 8 million players, knocking CSGO's player count out of the water by a staggering 10 times. Times, and it just kept getting better. A lot of Valorant content started popping up around this time, and it was seeing insane view counts on both YouTube and Twitch. To demonstrate this, Twitch streams of the game around this time were receiving an average of 75,000 views. But didn't you just say that the streams in April were hitting 1.4 million views? Well, yes. And this was the issue that I mentioned previously. The viewership for the game dropped off incredibly quickly after the game's release, which caused a lot of people to raise their eyebrows at Riot. Because that shouldn't happen. So yes, of course, views are gonna drop off after a certain amount of time, but not in that amount of time. That's pretty sad. And yes, we are still talking about Valorant and not this YouTube channel. The game started to fall off in popularity and people just assumed that the game was a short-lived success that would be benched after this shocking launch. But that would all change in 2021. And it was safe to say that no one saw this coming. But just before we get into the rise of Valorant, I would just like to quickly ask that you do consider subscribing if you are enjoying this video, as only 2.5% of my viewers are actually subscribed. So if you want to see more content just like this, then smash that button and turn on notifications. And I'm trying to hit 1k by the end of March, and we are so close. So hit that button or I will steal your cat. Now let's get back to the video. In February of 2021, Valorant started skyrocketing in popularity with a player count of 10 million players. The game had come back from the nosedive it took in the last few months of the year, and it just kept going up. So much so that by the end of the year, the game was sitting at an even more whopping 14 million players. The reason for this massive boom, no pun intended, of popularity is not clear, but I personally attribute it to a few reasons. First, of course, was YouTube and Twitch content. This is because the volume volume of Valorant content that began to be released skyrocketed the amount of people who even knew that Valorant existed. Secondly was actually the game itself. The game was designed to be more casual than CSGO, but it still took a lot of practice and skill to even improve at the game. And finally was the introduction of Valorant Esports, otherwise known as VCT. BCT began a new era of Valorant, and that was toddlers thinking that they're tense, trying to rank up in comp. The introduction of VCT really brought forward the more competitive side of the game, and the event itself had a major following, peaking around 1 million views of the event. The tournament then went and blew up even more when they started lands for the event. The arenas were filled with all people there to cheer on their favorite teams and players. The impact of the advancing and, to be honest, overwhelming amount of players who flocked to Valorant purely for the comp scene came 
came in the form of a new type of content on YouTube, and that was, of course, coaching content. If you search the term how to improve at Valorant, you'll be greeted by thousands of videos all by different people and, of course, pro guides. Valorant just kept increasing in popularity, with new maps and agents constantly being added every episode. However, these new pieces of content brings us to what would soon bring forward the beginning of Valorant's decline. The content that Riot started adding to Valorant is very stale. It's hard to pick out any interesting pieces of content from the past few updates. And when Riot aren't adding new content, they're actively just handicapping multiple characters just because they're too good, I guess. The easiest quote-unquote rework to talk about would of course be Chamber, because Riot took that man out back and shot him in between the fucking eyes, I swear to God. To start, they reduced his TP range, then the amount of TPs from 2 to 1, then began restricting the range of the trap, then they added a 30 seconds recall penalty, and so much more. They just violated this man for no fucking reason. But he's French, so he kind of deserved it. In all seriousness though, Riot, when they nerf a character, they either completely smash their fucking kneecaps in with a ferris wheel until they're a pile of pulp, or just lightly blow in their direction. But enough of the rant. Let's get back to speaking about the content of the game. It was around 2022 that Valorant began to get rather stale, so in an attempt to revive the game, the absolute giga brains at Riot decided to make new game modes such as Swift Play and then Team Deathmatch. Which, holy fuck, they added a Team Deathmatch when the solo one just sucks ass! And on top of this, there was a lot of complaints from those who had spent time grinding ranked. And as a reward for those who decided to reach the top ranks, they would just get the same gun buddy they've received like 20 times at this point because the people in Radiant never fucking changes. And now I've kind of just dug myself a hole and I don't know how to segue out of this, so let's just skip. Yeah, so um, the game modes of Valorant are really boring. The team deathmatch mode was fun for like a week, and that was until it got way too sweaty, just like the entire game. I blame you, Tens. The one game mode that I do genuinely enjoy is Swift Play. I enjoyed Swift Play and still do. It's just fun. And it's just like, well, a faster version of the game. God, your scripting's so good. Yeah, so TLDR, the game modes just suck. Just because they're really boring. The only semi-interesting game mode is Spike Rush because you get a random gun each round. And even then, it's not really that random because it goes by subclass and there really aren't that many guns in the game, so it just really kind of sucks all the randomness out of it, making it pretty fucking pointless, and also very boring. And I'm just gonna kind of ad-lib this bit here because this is another issue with the content of Valorant. It is way too balanced. Like, I know WestJet has already spoken about this in one of his videos about Valorant dying, but there are no real breaks in the game. I mean, like, one of the best parts of, like, Apex Legends content is just laughing at how fucking broken the content in that game is, but Valorant is way too balanced and it just feels like it's built to be competitive rather than just casual anymore. Like, there is just something so profoundly beautiful about a game sucking ass because of how broken it is. Just break the game. I don't care. Make it unbalanced. God, make it fun. But no, we'll keep it balanced and we'll keep forcing you to buy fucking skins. Stop selling me skins, please. I'm on my knees. Okay, that got really weird. Let's get things back on track by talking about the biggest thing that is killing Valorant. Oh! The Valorant community sucks. Thanks for watching. I'm kidding, of course. I can't shut the fuck up, so let's go. But that is genuinely the crux of it. The community sucks. Playing games of Valorant goes from being called an endless amount of slurs to having to listen to cringy e-daters with deep voice and the fucking uwu voice. For every kill you get, I'll give you an uwu. <laughs> All right, bet. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Because the community is overly cringe e-daters and just toxic people. Some of the Valorant community are just way too much. Every game you play is genuinely a dice roll because you could either be teamed with some genuinely nice people or just the scum of the fucking earth. I actually hate the community because it's just filled to the brim with people who just take the game way too seriously and then get mad at each other for not taking it seriously. Like, come on, man. You're an iron too. Shut the fuck Fuck up! But what is way worse than overly toxic people? Passive aggressive silver players. Now Riot, and by extension Valorant, has a zero toxicity policy, which apparently doesn't apply to League of Legends. And this policy is what gave birth to this different breed of specimen. I personally find it genuinely more frustrating to have someone just be passive aggressive in a game than rather be damn right dickish. Because you can't say anything back without looking like an asshole. That wasn't a nice try. I sucked dick. And 
there goes any algorithmic push that this video could have got. Please subscribe if you're seeing this. But enough of my brain dead ramblings. It's not like I'm a Valorant content creator. Valorant content in the last few years has gotten horrifically bad. The reason for this is simply because the game's content is just too dry. This was something that I mentioned earlier. The content inside of the game is just too balanced and that kills any possibility there is of creative content. And the fact that the game is too balanced just makes the game easier to be competitive with and it's just murdered any possibility for casual players to just have fun. And it is also murdered the chance to make content easily and to make content without being screamed at for not taking the game seriously. But what is Valorant content anyway? Well, over the past three years, it's gone from friends teaming up and just having fun to focusing more on mechanical skill-based content. And then of course, we had the rise of coaching content, which just made the game even more competitive. And now of course, the Valorant content we get on TikTok is just people doing cringy voices and playing the game. And it's safe to say that this type of content makes me want to gouge my eyes out with a toothbrush. And then of course, you got the whole other side of skin review content where streamers just shill these dumb skins even when they look like ass, they just still promote them. Side note, these skins are way too overpriced for what they are. Like a good majority of them look shit. And I know you could technically argue that CSGO gets away with this, but at least you can sell them. And it is sad to say, but Valorant content on YouTube and Twitch now is just the same copy paste content, just simply because it performs well. And I guess you could technically say that Valorant is a microcosm for everything wrong with YouTube. And I guess, yes, it could be argued that that's all YouTube content is now anyways, but I think that's a little too deep for this silly little video. All Valorant content is now is just the same skill level players with the same stupid Valorant accent just hitting clips and uploading them to their channels to get thousands, if not millions of views. It's gotten to the point that the most original type of Valorant content is from people like Poticus and other people just like him. But the thing is, that content would be the exact same even without the game, because it's not about the game, it's about his singing and people's reactions to it. And I still genuinely believe that the massive surge of cringe e-dater content has single-handedly killed the entire content scene for Valorant. And this is evidenced by the amount of people who have just moved away from Valorant content because everywhere in the community is just so cringe. Yes, I am looking at you, NRG. So after all is said and done, is Valorant dead? Well, not exactly. The game still has a very large player base that keeps it alive, but thanks to the toxic cess Pit that is that community. The game has a massive stain on its reputation, and combined with the stale content for the game, it's definitely in a decline. So, if 2020 to 2022 was the meteoric rise of Valorant, then 2023 and onwards is most certainly the fall. Wait, what happened to CSGO? Well, that's a story for a different time. Thank you for watching.